Welcome back. Since I've been pushing the zone for some years, experimenting with things like growing coffee in North Florida and growing vanilla indoors and planting bananas outside of their range and trying to get citrus to grow in Tennessee, I've done a lot of experiments with growing stuff where they don't necessarily grow, which ended up becoming my book, Push the Zone, The Good Guide to Growing Tropical Plants Beyond the Tropics. That book has sparked more interest in the idea of pushing the zone and I've seen you know, a lot of people uh, who have enjoyed reading the book and have come back and said, hey, check this out, check this out, and check out what I'm gonna try and grow here. And one thing that I got recently, uh, Matt sent me some photos of bananas growing in Tacoma, Washington. Check these out. See how they're growing right along this side of the house? That's a banana flowering in Tacoma, Washington, Matt writes. If you look real close, you can see some bunches of tiny bananas. My dad tells me they never mature to edibility. The plant is on the south-facing side of the house. Now you might think that Tacoma, Washington is pretty far north. I mean, it looks like it's really far north. It's actually only zone 8A. It is not that cold there because of the thermal mass of the ocean. It's not that far from the ocean, so it's a zone 8A. He's also got these growing along the side of a house. Now, you could push just a little further. If these things are actually getting to blooming and creating fruit that far north in an area where it freezes pretty good in the winter, you could cover and wrap and protect those things and probably get yourself some bananas. The deal with bananas is that they get cold and they quit growing. So it might be, you know, in the summer they might be growing really well and they put a bloom out, but then it gets to the fall and the bloom and the bananas just don't do anything. They just barely move or they don't grow at all. And then the winter comes and it freezes and it takes the tree down further down in the trunk. So zone pushing bananas requires that you don't let that fruit freeze. And the fruit of course is at the top of the tree coming out of the side there. So if you cut back any of those leaves, it's going to not be good for the fruit because more cold comes down. But it's possible if you can get the timing right and you can protect the trunk during the year. So it's maybe getting close to blooming by the end of the year. In the spring comes, if you've protected enough of the trunk, you will get bananas the next year. I think it's more than po possible to grow bananas in Tacoma, Washington, if you tweak it. And the, the idea of pushing the zone means you're looking not necessarily to grow something that's totally impossible, but to find the sweet spot where you can grow a plant and just do a couple of tweaks. I'm not all about, you know, putting out electric heaters and that sort of thing or building expensive greenhouses. But often you can get a couple of zones just by planning in some thermal mass. I mean, I one year uh, I had a loquat tree that was blooming and I really wanted to know what type of fruit it was going to make. But the problem is, is that loquats bloom in the winter. So the blooms are not nearly as cold tolerant as the rest of the tree is. So knowing that it was in bloom and that a frost was coming down to about 20 degrees, I went, oh man, the tree's gonna go through it and I'm gonna lose all the blooms. I'm not gonna know what the fruit are like. So I took a barrel, a 55 gallon drum of water and I put it under one corner of the tree. And over that corner of the tree, because the tree was too tall for me to reach all of it, I covered that branch with blankets and put it down over that 55 gallon drum. And guess what? That area of blooms sailed through that night and it produced fruit just on that one corner of the tree where overnight the warmth of that water was inside of that blanket and there was so much water in there that thermal mass kept the cold from getting in and nailing it. This is the kind of like backyard science sort of thing you could do. $12 barrel full of water and you can get fruit on a tree that normally wouldn't sail through at all. That sort of thing is really cool. South facing wall of your house. I grew coffee on the south facing wall of my house in North Florida. It went through nights in the teens and didn't die. It just blew my mind. I had black pepper back there, key limes. I had key limes every Christmas and that is far above. Trust me, if you don't know how Florida works, when you get up to North Central Florida in the middle of the state, temperatures get down to the teens. They might hit 12 degrees. One time it hit 12 degrees there. And that's way too cold for tropical plants. But it only does that about a week to two weeks of nights, maybe, through the year. You know, So you might get a night here, and then a few weeks go by, and you get another night that goes down to 20. You might get a night that goes down to 15. You might get a night that goes down to 30. 
and it kind of spreads out here and there through the winter but then usually after the night goes by it warms up again and it's not below freezing during the day for very long but with a little bit of tweaking you could bring the tropicals up and you could use the same methods that I describe in the book to grow peach trees in say New York or to grow citrus in Georgia so figure out how to push the zone and you'll be growing things where they don't necessarily belong but you'll amaze your friends and have a great time and get some good food out of it too. Thanks for watching and until next time may your thumbs always be green. I went to see David David the Good We listened to Portis Head and drank spiced rum Yeah.